In this Lightroom color grading tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how you can create this urban cinematic look in your images to make your photos look more like a blockbuster film. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so the very first thing you want to do is just go ahead and choose a photo. And I have chosen this photo here. And again, if you'd like to follow along with the same photo that I've got, go ahead to the link in the description. Right, so what we want to do is to create a more cinematic look. Now, cinematic word kind of gets thrown around a lot. But basically, what we want to do is kind of create colors that you'll find in a lot of blockbuster films. Now, that's a lot of blues in the shadows. Uh, again, the skin tones are usually not affected. Uh, so what we want to do is kind of emphasize and manipulate the colors found within Lightroom Classic. So what we're going to do, Firstly, jump over to the develop panel found on the right hand side. And then what we want to do is firstly drop down to the basics panel. Right, so what we're gonna do is go to the temperature and we're gonna go for minus 10. And then we're gonna go for the tint and we're gonna go plus 10. So what we're doing is we're adding in blues and adding in magentas to the photo. Then what we're gonna do in this particular case, we're gonna go for a 0.5 increase because what we're gonna do is we're gonna darken certain kind of colors and hues that you'll find in the photo later on. So we want to basically overexpose the photo first and then bring it back. Of course, you can leave the exposure alone and then bring it back afterwards. It's completely up to you how you like working, but I like working kind of methodically going through each one of the panels and at the end finishing. But of course you could jump around Complete depends on how you like working. Okay, what we're gonna do is go to the contrast here. I'm gonna go ahead and add in 40% contrast. Then what we're gonna do is gonna go to the highlights, minus those by 40%, then go to the shadows, and then we're gonna increase those by 50%. Then what we do is go to the whites, drop those down by minus 40, the same as the highlights, and the same for the blacks. So we're gonna go to the blacks here, and we're gonna increase those by 50%. Then what we're gonna do is go to texture, add in 10% texture, we're gonna add in clarity of 15, and then we're gonna to go to dehaze and add in 20 there. That will cut through some of that haze you'll see in most urban style photos. There's some fog or mist that's sometimes seen, just the overall pollution in the atmosphere. Again, that will hopefully just cut through that. Okay, and then what we wanna do is go to vibrance and saturation. I'm gonna increase those both by 20%. So 20% vibrancy there and 20%. Now, if it looks oversaturated, don't worry, I'm gonna go into the hue, saturation and lumen slider later on. I'm gonna add and subtract some saturation from certain parts of the photo using the hue sliders. Okay, so let's turn off the basics panel and let's jump down to tone curve. Now, like I was saying, it is a little bit overexposed. So we're gonna create a quite dramatic curve. We're not gonna go for an S curve. We're not adding in contrast. We're gonna go for a simple kind of C curve. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise up those blacks by quite a lot. So we're gonna raise those up to around 50. So input of zero, output of around 50. Then what we're gonna do is take those midtones and we're gonna bring those down, creating this kind of curve that you can see here. What I like doing as well is bringing down those shadows a little bit further, but we're gonna create quite a dramatic drop in overall kind of exposure here. But what we're doing, so if you can see by the histogram, there are now no blacks. So what we've done is we've replaced all blacks with a type of gray. And this will create a more kind of cinematic look, I find, especially in the shadows. Okay, so once you're happy with that kind of drop overall, what we're gonna do is go over to the reds. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a center point in the middle, and you wanna have input of 128, and then you wanna have the output of 128. Then you want to find, roughly go in between the midtones and shadows, you want to make another point and you want that point to be 60. Then you want to go to the output of that and you want to drop that down by 50. So we're creating a subtle S curve by bringing down those kind of shadowed black areas you can see here. And we want to do the same for the greens as well. So make a center point, 128, output of 128. Then you want to make a point around here. You want to look for input of 60. And we want to drop that input down. So we're darkening that by 50. So input of 60, output of 50, and do the same with the blues. So we'll go for a central point, find 128, which is the center, uh, 128 again for the center, then roughly between the shadows and blacks, you wanna find the input of 60, and again, you wanna output that by 50. So all of these should be the same. Input of 60, output of 50 for the red, 
green and blue channels. And then for the point curve, we're going for this quite dramatic C curve that you can see here. Okay, right, so let's finish out of the tone curve and let's jump down to hue, saturation and luminance. And let's start off with hue first. Okay, so let's re leave the reds alone. Let's go to the oranges and drop that down by minus 10. Then go to the yellows and drop that down by minus 80. So what we're doing is we're taking some of those yellows and we're gonna turn them a little bit more into orange. Yellow, I know it sounds like a silly idea, but yellow isn't a very cinematic color. So what we're doing is we're removing it and turning it or converting it more into a little bit more of an orangey color, more of a darker color. Now again, obviously you don't have to do this, but I personally think yellow is quite a, a bright saturated color. So converting it more into an orangey reddish color can look quite nice. Again depending on what photo you're working on, give it a go and see if it works for you. Okay, so let's leave Hue alone and let's go over to Saturation. Now you wanna make quite a big change here. So we're gonna go for reds, drop that down by minus 50. We're gonna go to oranges, drop that down by minus 50. We're gonna go to yellows, drop that down by minus 50. We're gonna go to greens, you guessed it, drop that down by minus 50. And then we're gonna go to aquas, drop that down by minus 50. And now blues, we wanna drop a little bit further. So what we're gonna do is go to the blue here, drop that down by minus 80. Then we're gonna go to the purples and we're gonna go back to minus 80. And then the last one, we've got magenta here, we're gonna drop that down by minus 80. So all of these are minus 50 and then these are minus 80. That is why we added more saturation and vibrance earlier because we don't wanna drop it down so far that there's no color in the photo. Again, we don't want it to be black and white. We do want some color in it. And as you can see, it is bleeding through, but we're creating a bit more of that cinematic look. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the color grading panel later on to add in that color again, to create more of a consistent look. And it works really well when you want to apply it to multiple photos, to create more of a, a consistent look across an entire catalog. Great if you want to create a preset. Okay, and then the last one we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use the luminance panel. So we're gonna make two changes in here. Orange, we're gonna increase that by 30. As you can see, brightens up the kind of car there you can see. And then yellow, we're gonna go ahead and increase that by 10. Okay, that's all we need to do in hue, saturation, and luminance. Let's drop down to color grading. So in the shadows, we'll impact the shadows first. We want to add in a blue. So the hue blue that I quite like is 200, which you can see is between dark blue and light blue, and it works quite nicely. We're gonna go ahead and enter there. Right, with saturation on the other hand, we want to add in a little bit of saturation. So we're gonna go for about 10% saturation. And what we'll do is it will start replacing that kind of gray that we had to more of a, a dark blue, which, which works quite nicely. Then what we're gonna do is go over to the highlights. We're gonna go for a hue of 60, and then we're gonna add in saturation. So where does that look good? I think around about 20%. Now, the cast of that has made the photo look a little bit muddy. So what we can do is actually increase the blending. So we go to the blending and we're gonna go all the way to 100. Then what we're gonna do is take the balance and we're gonna drop that down. So we're gonna go for about minus 25 in this particular case. What we're doing is we're bringing the balance, we're overemphasizing the kind of overall shadows, casting a bit more of an overall tone. And then the blending is how much the kind of highlights and shadows blend together. If you wanna know more about the color grading, I've actually made a dedicated masterclass video, which I'll make sure I'll place the link in the description. Okay, so color grading, well that's done. So let's drop out of here. What we need to do now is go to lens correction. Now, if you're working in RAW, you wanna make sure these are turned on. So remove chromatic aberration is turned on, as well as enable profile card corrections. Now, obviously I am working on JPEGs, it doesn't apply to me, but if I'm ever making anything, I'm always making sure that if I'm making it into a preset, these two buttons are ticked. It will help fix any distortion, vignetting, or chromatic aberration that will be appearing on your photos due to the lens's optics. So having these two buttons is really important to tick. Of course, if you'd like to, you can always go into manual and change that, but I predominantly just use the profiles we can see here. Okay, we'll do that. Right, and the second to last thing we're gonna do is go down to the effects panel, go to where you can see post cropping vignette, go to amount, and go for minus 20. Then what you want to do is go to the feather and you want to increase that to 75. What I'll do is this ever so have a very slight kind of, uh, kind of overall vignette to the photo. You don't want it too harsh. If you would like it harsher, just lower the feather, but I like adding a nice graduated vignette. So you can increase the feather like so. And then what we're gonna do is go down to the calibration. We're gonna to go to the hue primary. We're gonna go ahead and add in 15. We're gonna to go to the green primary. We're gonna go ahead and add in 15. And then the last thing we're gonna do is go to the 
blue primary, I'm going to go for minus 15. That'll bring out some of those blues that you can see in the very dark shadows. And there we go, guys. So what I can do is show you the before. As you can see, a fairly nice photo, but not very well color graded. And then after, we've got this really nice cinematic tone. It's almost got these greeny teal colors starting to come through the shadows. I really, really like it. And what I could do is show you the before and after side by side. So the before is on the left and the after is on the right. We've brought out that snow, that grittiness, and it works really well to create this urban cinematic look. And what I could do is show you a few other photos that I've applied this preset to. So here is another photo, as you can see, more of an urban style, works really nice. Here is the before and here is the after. Again, it's really emphasized those orange. You see what I mean by converting them to orange? I must say, it looks really, really nice. And then we've got another photo here, that building I love the color of. If I show you the before, you can see it's like a generic building. After, it's almost added this coolness to it. I must say, I really, really like it. And we've got another photo here. It works again really nicely. Another photo and another photo of a taxi. And if I show you the before and after, before is on the left and after is on the right. And it's added this nice kind of orangey cinematic look, matted out those shadows. I must say, I really, really like this effect. Now, of course, what I recommend doing, going over to your presets and then just saving it as a preset so you can make it again and again and again using just one single button. But again, there we go, guys. That's how you can create this urban cinematic style look to your photos using Lightroom Classic. Here is the before and here is the after. And if this particular type of effect worked for you, make sure to write it down in the comments below.